number one says there are many cylinders with volume 144 cubic inches. The height H of R in inches of one of these cylinders is a function of its radius in inches where H of R equals 144 over R squared. So what is the height of one of these cylinders going to be if the radius is two inches? So we're just gonna take, we know that R equals two in this case, we're just gonna plug it into this function and figure out what the height um, with a radius of two will be. So we'll do H of two. So we get 144 divided by two squared, which is four. So when we do 144 divided by four, we get um, that our height is 36 inches. So then what is the height of one of these cylinders if the radius is three inches? So now we're just gonna plug three in. So we're gonna get 144 divided by three squared and three squared is nine. So we'll just do 144 divided by nine and we get the height um, when the radius is three inches to be 16 inches. And then um, what is the height of one of these cylinders if the radius is six inches? So we'll plug six in. So 144 divided by six squared and six squared is 36. So we'll do 144 divided by 36. So our height when our radius is six inches is four inches. All right, then number two, um, the surface area S of R in square units of a cylinder with a volume of 18 cubic units is a function of its radius um, in units where S of R equals this. So what is the surface area of a cylinder with a volume of 18 and a radius of three? So this is for the volume of 18. So then we're just gonna plug in the radius of three. So we'll do S of three equals two times pi times the radius, which in this case is three squared, um, plus 36 divided by three. So then we'll just simplify this. So three squared is nine times two is 18. So we have 18 pi here, plus 36 divided by three is 12. And then, um, so we could say, if we leave it in terms of pi, it'll be this. If we want to do a decimal, we would just type this into our calculator and we'll get about 68.55. And then this is just in um, units squared since that's the surface area. All right, and number three, it says that Han finds the expression for S of R, which gives our surface area in square inches of any cylindrical can with a fixed volume in terms of its radius R, which is in inches. This is the graph Han gets if he allows R to take on any values between negative one and five. So what would be a more appropriate domain? And our domain here is our R values. So our radius, and we can't have a radius that would be less than zero. So it doesn't make sense to have this negative one or anything between negative one and zero. So we would want our radii um, to be greater than zero. Can't be zero because the circle wouldn't exist. So anything larger than zero is good. And then what's an appropriate minimum or sorry, an approximate minimum for the surface area of this can. So we'll just look down here for kind of the low point and then go over um, to the surface area here. And now we've got one, two, three, four, five dashes that make up 20. So each one is worth four. So something around maybe 16. And then surface area is in square units, so square inches in this case. Number four, the graph of a polynomial function is shown. 
is the degree to the polynomial even or odd and explain your reasoning. So we know when the ends of our function go in the same direction that that's an even polynomial. So this is even um, since the ends point the same way. Number five, the polynomial function p of x is defined here and has, an, has known factors of x plus four and x minus one. So let's rewrite this as a product of linear factors. So we're gonna need to divide these factors into this polynomial. So I'm gonna draw out the box over here. And um, so we're gonna, I'm gonna divide in the x plus four first. So we'll put x plus four on this side, and then this is gonna be our starting term in here. So now what times x gives us x to the fourth? So x times x cubed gives us x to the fourth. So then we'll take x cubed times four to figure out that this box is four x cubed. Then we know that these two terms are like terms. So we're gonna figure out 4x and what would give us 4x cubed. So 4x cubed and what will give us 4x cubed? Well, that's gonna be zero because we already have the 4x cubed. So then x times what gives us zero? So x times zero gives us zero. And then zero times four gives us zero for this box. So now we wanna figure out our next set of like terms, this one and this one will give us our x squared term. So zero and negative seven x squared will get us to this negative seven x squared. So then x times negative seven x will get us negative seven x squared. And then four times negative seven x gives us negative 28 x. And then we'll find our x-like term. So negative 28x and what gets us to negative 22x? So that's gonna be plus 6x. So then x times six gets us 6x. And then six times four gets us 24. And then that 24 matches here. So we have a remainder of zero. So we divided correctly. So now we're gonna divide in this x minus one polynomial into our new polynomial here, okay? So into this purple one. So we're gonna write our x minus um, one term on the side here. And let me get um, this middle row in. So then we're gonna start with this x cubed right here because now we're dividing to this polynomial. And so x times what gives us x cubed? So x times x squared gives us x cubed. And then x squared times negative one gives us negative x squared. So now we'll be looking for our um, like term. So negative x squared plus what gets us zero x squared? So negative x squared plus 1x squared. So then x times x gets us x squared and negative one times x gets us negative x. So now we can find our x-like terms. So negative x plus what gets us to negative seven x? So that's gonna be negative six x. And then we have x times negative six gets us the negative six x, and then negative one times negative six gets us plus six, which matches, so our remainder is zero. So now what we've done is figured out that this original polynomial, okay, divides down so far to x plus four times x minus one times this final polynomial here of x squared 
plus x minus 6. So now we need to factor this purple part. And so this purple part has an a value of 1. So we just need to find the factors of negative 6 that add to positive 1. So this will be positive 3 and negative 2. So I'm just going to write down these factors again. So x plus 4 times x minus 1. And then this will factor to x plus 3 and x minus 2. So just putting those in. Then this wants us to draw a rough sketch of this graph. So now we know it's going to cross at all of these x-intercepts. So if I draw this out, um, let me just get some values here. So we know that it's going to cross at x-intercepts of um, x equals negative 4 for this one, x equals 1, x equals negative 3, and x equals 2. So it's going to cross at negative 4, positive 1, negative 3, and positive 2. Then if we look at the original equation, it's going to cross at a y value of 24. Okay, so I could change my scale here to count by like, fives or 10, like even sixes, but let's count by fives. So let's say that this is 20 right here. So then let me just add in another one. So this is going to be 25. So this is going to cross, you know, somewhere in here. And then we also know that the leading term here, okay, so the lead term of my original polynomial was, um, x to the fourth. So this is an even degree and it's positive. So we know that that's going to be up on both ends. Okay, so it's going to be up on both sides. So this is going to come down, go through the zero, back up, okay, up here, cross down at that y-intercept, go down and back through. So it's going to be up on both ends. It's going to go through those four um, zeros and then also cross, you know, the y axis pretty high up at 24. Number six, which polynomial has a factor of x plus one? So you can go and divide into all of these if you want to using the box. If it has a factor of x plus one, okay, that means it has a zero of x equals negative one. So if I set this equal to zero and solve, and that means that if I plug negative 1 into the function, it's going to equal 0. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to plug negative 1 into all of these. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Then we have negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 19 times negative 1 is positive 19. And then we have that minus 20. So negative 1 plus 2 is 1, plus 19 is 20, minus 20 is 0. So this is a factor of this one. B, so we have negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 21 times negative 1 is positive 21, and then plus 20. So negative 1 plus 21 is 20, plus 20 is 40. So this is, um, x plus 1 is not a factor of that one. Um, and this says which polynomial, so it's only going to be 1. So the answer is going to be A. I just would like to check it in all of these just to make sure. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. 11 times negative 1 is negative 11. And then we have minus 20. Well, all of those are negative, so it's not going to get back up to zero. So that's definitely not going to be a factor. Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 and then minus 1. 
So again, all of those are negative, so it's not going to get to zero. So just A.